Hello everybody, John here and today on To The Garage, I've got great news. I now own the second rarest of all of the Jaguar XK8 genuine Jaguar accessories. Some of you may remember that way on back, I did a video that was showing you all of the genuine accessories that were available from launch on the XK8. And in this video, I identified the glove box torch as being my favorite. Uh, it's my favorite because for me, it feels like a nice quirky um, little gadget to have in the car. There's a space where it fits that I've always wondered about. I know that they're rare because I'm a huge XK8 fan and I've never seen one fitted to a car or otherwise whenever I've been at shows and chatting to people. They wouldn't have been pushed particularly hard by Jaguar because they were a dealer fit option. So you'd buy a relatively expensive torch, rechargeable, but because it's rechargeable, it has to be fitted by the dealer, install wiring and drilling holes and bits and pieces in your £60,000 car. So whilst people tick the options for alloy wheels and metallic paint because it comes with a car, they were less inclined maybe to tick some of the extras in the accessories catalogue. And the dealer selling on the car certainly wouldn't have been flicking it around going, oh yes, it just costs this much. Oh, and then you have to bring it in and we'd install it for you. And you know, a few hours of labor, we'd have that done. So it would come out very expensive. I doubt there'd be much in a way of profit in it for the dealers. And it's something that you can't see on the car. And most people spend money on options and extras because they feel the benefit, as in heated seats or you can see the effect. So nicer wheels, nicer paint, that sort of thing. There's a side issue with a rechargeable torch in terms of people like me wanting to fit them later in life. Um, yes, they're out there, they were manufactured, they're on shelves or were, but they have NICAD rechargeable batteries in them. And even if they're 25 years old and never been out of the box, What's the chances that they still work very, very slim. So it's the second rarest, in my opinion, of all of the options for the XK8. What's the rarest? I can't prove this, but because I've never found anybody who really knows what they are or why, there is an offer in the accessories catalogue of security bolts to prevent your front and rear bumpers from being stolen. I don't know where you live, but that's not really a big problem where I come from. And security bolts? We're we talking locking nuts? I don't know. I don't think any or many of them were ever sold. So I've been looking for one of these for seven years. Uh, I have been offered a BMW one previously, which looks a little similar, but I wanted obviously a Jaguar one in Jaguar packaging. And it is subtly different, having seen physically the two, but a very similar concept. Um, but I've been unable to get hold of one. I've got to send another huge thanks to Simon Culbreef, who runs another one of our YouTube favourites, and that's Jaguars in the Barn. If you've not checked that one out or subscribed to it, please do. It's another XK8 man. And Simon got in touch with me when he'd managed to track down what he thought was two torches, turned out to be one, um, being sold in Italy. And he purchased it and then let me know about it because he knew how keen I was. And I swiped them off him for the price that he paid plus postage. So 
Thank you so much, Simon. I really appreciate it. And you've given me a lot of joy. Let's have a little look at what we've got. Good sign. It could be a little man, but I'm going for okay. Made to Jaguar specification. Jaguar logo. One JLM 20352. Made to Jaguar spec in the UK. I think that's the logo of Smurfit. Could be wrong. It was a um, cardboard manufacturer or packaging manufacturer in the UK. Oh, look. So we have ah. fitting instructions. And these would have been primarily for dealers to fit because this is not a um, DIY fit on your £60,000 car. This would very much have been a dealer option, optional extra. So uh, I have actually got a copy of this I managed to find off the internet and it is on um, the website in the interesting documents area if anybody would like to see it. But I've got a new Legitimate copy, yay. New, 25 years old, no doubt. Oh there, that's interesting. September 96. And there's the actual item. And a fitting kit. Looks like it consists of cable ties, a couple of rubber bushes. Some screws, scotch locks, and these bushes have got threaded inserts in. And I would imagine there to mount this unit. And if we take the torch part, it should pull out of there. Yay. And there is our rechargeable torch. And I believe it has a magnet. Oops. Yep, that's a magnet on there. Not very strong. And that's the charging port. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So what this needs now is a little experiment to see if it's fully functioning or not. <clears throat> I mean, it's new, other than Simon opening the box to check what it was, never been opened, so it should be all intact, but there are 25 year old batteries in here, and it is supposed to be a sealed unit, so ideally it will work, but if it doesn't, I will obviously change what's inside there. Look at how the lens comes off. There we go. There's a little white strip to pass as a reflector. That might get an upgrade. Okay, so what I'll do is I will put this on charge. Okay, this obviously looks a little excessive, but I've got my spare Jaguar battery So it's the last one I replaced and It was still in reasonable fettle. It was just an age Related swap so I hung on to this one and keep it well charged So that I can use it for an emergency swap over on the car So hopefully that's supplying some charge before I do anything We'll just open that up and use our multimeter to 20 volt range. Oh, 
and there's 11.8 volts which is fine for this plug in back in and if we flip the switch nothing that doesn't necessarily mean anything because <clears throat> You wouldn't expect it to light up whilst it was on charge as it belongs in the glove box. So we'll give that an hour and come back to it. Just looking how, to, how you might disassemble. Well, we'll leave the torch there for now. Obviously the next step is gonna be a disassembly and restoring what I find inside. And the next episode, I'll share those clips with you. And then it'll be probably a third episode where we share the installation. So let's go on now to the calendar. It's now April. So it's time to say bye bye to Larry Allingham's car. And a brilliant photo. Really enjoyed having that one on the wall. And go to our next one, which is Lee Wolford's 2004 XKR. And this is the Brecon Beacon, South Wales. A beautiful area, which I am reasonably familiar with. Great car. And Lee's car, what we've commented on on this picture, is that it's a late XKR. This one is a 2004. So um, it's got all of the dress-up items or the upgrades in terms of the visual effect. And these late cars are reasonably easy to spot. Um, so we've got the XKR's little vestigial spoiler on the back, which is not unique to this age of vehicle. But what it does have is a plinth here with Jaguar embossed on it and a press button release for the boot lid. Basically a duplication of the button you have on your dashboard to release the boot lid. Earlier cars have a completely different form of this trim piece without the button, without the Jaguar embossed in it. The rear bumper is larger than on early cars and sticks out from the bodywork at the sides at the back. Early cars, it's actually retracted underneath the car to accentuate the fuselage styling language. Fuselage being the idea that the, the car is kind of a cigar shape. It wraps under very, very heavily. By this stage, they were adding body work packages to make it look more aggressive and more in keeping with the, the look of the times and um, the sort of design philosophy of Ian Callum. We've also got the extended side sills, again, sticking out from the bodywork and one of the best features of the later cars for me is we've lost the rubbing strip down the side. And I think it looks very clean and very nice. And if I was gonna make any bodywork changes to my very, very early car, then I would probably go for deleting the rubbing strips down the side. Not because I hate them, just because I think this accentuates the smooth flowing lines even more. Um, I won't be doing that because I'm not a slave to originality, but my early car is my early car. And at, by this stage, all the cars have got the so-called crystal rear lights where you can see through the red very clearly into the chrome reflectors around the brake lights, fog lights, etc. cetera. Uh, the clear section at the top and a very small chrome bead or edge around the tail light. If you're enjoying our channel, then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos. And below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat.